Welcome to another Facehammer Faction review video where we're going to tell you all about the Grand Alliance destruction. So all things crumping, smashing, bashing, mightier, whatever you want to say. Are we going to talk about yeah, we, the... Uh... We've done the, done the dead ones, now we're doing the hitty ones. And, uh... <laughs> So this is the this is the only remaining small one. Order and chaos are of course absolutely huge. Yeah. So um, destruction. Yeah. Uh, and I think we're going to split those into two videos for order and two for uh, chaos. Yeah. I think it's too much. To you could do, do all the owls for order. You were suggesting yeah. that, weren't you? Might be an interesting way to do it. We'll figure it out. Anyway, start hitting people today <laughs> unsubtly. Yeah. So um, we're going to go through all of the. Um, the models and sort of theme of the four main factions from Destruction Grand Alliance give you a little bit of our opinion about where we think they are in terms of their power spectrum and and yep. sort of their, how they play. And then at the end, yep. we're going to give you a rating about what we think for beginners, how good they are as a starting army for Age of Sigma. Yeah, and that takes in everything into account. So like you know, building, painting. Do they play like they should? You know, are they enjoyable to play in the smashing and bashing fashion that they should be? Um, and does that work? So, yeah. Okay. So, um, Destructions, although there's there's more factions than what's represented here, the god of destruction is Kragnos, recently awoken from his kind of like uh, realm stone uh infused slumber um and he's kind of come out the mountain doesn't really know what's going on and just starts hitting stuff um he could be taken in any destruction army um and effectively he's become a god because he ate so much uh realm stone it's made him kind of all powerful and the last time he was around the mortal realms he was beating up dragons so that's that's him in a nutshell um yeah nothing subtle about him <laughs> No, on so, the table, on the table as well. If you take that dude, he kind of runs, and you can't even put your dudes close to him because he'll kill everyone. So, yeah, um, he does does what he does what he says on the tin, basically. Yeah, exactly, and destruction kind of like forces of of nature in a way. Yeah, and from the the kind of the the more traditional green skin area, we've got uh, Gordrak, you know, who's the uh, the fist of Gork is the kind of like. The, the Iron Jaws Supreme Auric, who, uh, you know, they're, they're sort of the more kind of physical, brutal e element. Um, and then we've got on the opposite scale, Scragrot, who thinks the moon speaks to him and he's generally off of his head on mushrooms and uh thinks they're that, seen as the intelligent side of destruction yeah well they're the cunning side so more the mork <laughs> rather than gork or is it the other way sneaky more than smart <laughs> yeah and he's he's the loon king so he's kind of a bit mad uh he's got a big hat and he likes his mushrooms so that's the kind of you're starting to get a feel already for the theme of uh yeah of this definitely, faction <laughs> definitely fun on late uh, probably needs cut the elephant in the room needs covering kragnos is not a beast man model uh, yeah. <laughs> he does look like he could be though yeah. so it, if if you are confused by him next these green skins everyone else kind of was uh, initially as well but he's just there to hit stuff um that's that's all he does and you can paint him green if you want paint him any color you want it's your model absolutely um, of a pink a pink nos um so mm -hmm. let's start off and talk about gloom spike gates okay so, so uh, I think for a lot of people, this is, you know, a lot of people have a huge amount of love for the ideas of this army in general, especially with more modern models. And this, for a lot of people, would be probably one of the most uh, popularly considered first armies, I guess. Yeah, the model range is great, and we'll show that in a second. But their kind of background is, it's sort of, this is the sort of blurb from the back of the book. It says, as the bad moon fills the skies above, so the gloom spike gets surge up from the darkness below in a murderous horde, seething masses of grots, squigs, trogoths, gargants, and giant spiders drawn from their dripping caverns and dank veils by the sickly light of the bad moon, uh, which is kind of this, this sickly moon that they follow, they worship. Um, they, they're effectively sneaky, they're cunning, there's lots of them. 
they're backstabbing mobs you know they love their mush madcap mushrooms and they you know they get they get they take their mushrooms and they try and speak to the moon and they they're kind of um they're kind of like cave dwelling creatures um and it kind of lead, leads into the the background where you can play if you want to play like just squig army or you just want to play a trog off army you can do that um if you've got the battle tome in um battle tome kragnos they got some additional rules it might be bellacore actually um or they they have some extra gloom spike rules to for the those those trog off and squig armies to sort of expand them a little bit yeah um so bear that in mind if you're uh, if you're looking at getting into this faction. Um, so you'll need to sort of obviously they're a bit of an older book, um, and I think they suffer because of that. And in terms of gameplay, um, they're a very horde sort of melee army. In every sense, yeah. You do have some. You have sort of like low quality troops. But you normally have like stuff that could potentially do a lot of damage, but it's quite fragile. Like you know, mangler squigs, for example, yeah. or even arachnoc spiders could be a bit spiky. You know, trog offs are okay, but you don't have many. Um, Bravery is normally quite low. Um, yeah. You know, they're not. You, you really where their power is, um, as you can see from the the radar diagram, is their kind of spells and their debuffs. Um, because that's where you, they're, they're more sort of about making the opponent weaker or the, they get a turn where the moon moves and when it's in the middle of the table it kind of lights the whole battlefield up and all your stuff gets better but it's very unpredictable and it's only once per game that you're going to be getting that you're kind of just extending your yeah you're kind of uh, just extending your resilience as well aren't you it's not like you it depends particularly hope to overwhelm people by bashing their heads in it, it depends because more... it it does make the squigs a bit more spiky but like for example like the trolls heal better or so they all got different effects about to do with the moon and um mm. uh scrag rock can kind of have a little bit of influence over the moon so he can kind of like force it to move or stay still um and it basically moves diagonally across the battlefield. Um, so it's kind of, um, you know, again, that's quite random. They have this like loon shrine, which is quite key and they can recycle their units back. And with the update, they can do that with other units like Trogoffs and Squigs. So it's quite an important thing. It also has the immune to battle shock of element, which is quite important with an army with yeah. like bravery four or five, pretty much across and loads the board. of dudes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's um, a bit more rare in the game now as well, isn't it, to have that type of thing going on? Yeah, and, and I'd put their shooting down quite low. They do have shooting, but they're grots and they're quite short range, and it's not... And they're not particularly effective. No. You know, it's not great, even at short range, is it really? No, not really. And, like, resilience, they, they could have a lot of bodies, but they're not particularly brave. You know, they yep. they don't have, like, after saves. The armor save's not amazing. They're quite good at objective play just because there's so many of them and you can yeah. recycle um mobility wise it depends i mean what you put in your army will depend on what how mobile it is but like squigs for example they're a bit random how far they move and so you do have um a very flexible uh, pick up and play spell don't you mm -hmm. yeah and you have ways to ambush get a strand arachnorocks and things like that so yeah um they do have like s some mobility but again it's it's not always reliable and they're not always the best units to be like sort of popping up and things. So yeah, I mean, it's a little bit subjective, but it's kind of like they're, they're kind of in terms of like power, if you're interested in that, they're a little bit on the weak side. Uh, just it's take quite a lot of playing as well. Not yeah. only in just moving that amount of dudes around the board in the majority of builds, obviously if you build a, a troll army, then ignore what I've said, that moving that many dudes around the board and keeping on top of your magic phase and potentially your endless spells, which are very good, by the way, they're endless spells, or yeah, they are. Hopefully, they still are. No, I've just said that. <laughs> but um, there's, yeah, it's quite a lot to do on the table with them and a fair amount of upkeep and various things to be mindful of. So, you do have to play in a cunning and sneaky way with the army to get the most out of it. But that's, I think, that's fairly mentally taxing. Doesn't mean it's bad, but you know, they're not quite a uh, put your feet up, have a beer, and push the you know push the elephants forward or whatever it is as we will probably come to in some others i guess yeah there's a lot of um there's a lot of kind of like 
debuffing and, and, and like synergy that you need to use to get the most out. And it can be a little bit complicated if you're new yeah. to unlock that potential. So if you're just moving the models around and playing the rules on the war scrolls without digging too deep in cross abilities or, or allegiance stuff, then they'll feel a little bit weaker than they probably should. Yeah. Um, the characters are very important as well to, to, to get those buffs off or use those mm -hmm. abilities. You, you very often need your characters around and they aren't hugely defensible. Um, no. You know, if you're, you're five, six, seven wound, five up armor save person, potentially with a small after save or something, or look out, sir. If someone wants to be able to make them dead and they're the type of army that can pick on individual models, you may struggle to keep them alive, which again, it's fairly unforgiving or you just have to be very good at keeping out of range but still being close enough for stuff like that and i say like we should probably talk about the models because generally like when you're starting oh, that's, that's more ridiculous. important than anything else and their model oh range God. is amazing so it's just, I, I can't I, I there's not much that i can pick on from their range that i just don't think is amongst the best that gw have I love the shape of the armor. I love their monsters. I like. I love. I've always loved the Arachnarok. I think the new trolls are brilliant. The fact that you can do a troll army is outstanding, and maybe we'll touch on this towards the end, potentially this or the episode. But I think having quite a lot of trolls is a good way to counter the the difficult bits of a um, of a Moon Clan army. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm in love with them. You can paint them any way you want. Mm. You can put your flavor on them super easily. They're great for converting. Um, probably had to build quite a lot. <laughs> Yeah, you and do paint quite a lot, and which I isn't too forgiving. No, I think for me, like I really like the Squig army. Like one of my favourite models is the, the the sort of the hero on the giant Squig, which I've got on the screen, which I I just oh, think it's absolutely good. incredible. But the what's, generic what's like? boy got brown bounders and Squig hoppers and the Mangler Squigs. I think if you lean into that, the army is quite a lot of fun to play, and yeah. um, it's not that complex. But it plays it's, like it should as well, right? Yeah, it's very yeah. boingy uh <laughs> to, to to want of a better word so like although although we say that this army is um is not that beginner friendly like it, it doesn't like anything can can be a good starting army if you just love what you're doing and you just it's just enough to keep you motivated and go through it but you will struggle um you might be playing other friends that have got other art factions which are a little bit stronger and a little bit easier to use and you might be struggling from a gameplay point of or view it's just to be aware of that before you deep yeah. dive but again if and you love the, models, to get on the table like if you if your yeah. bro is starting a stormcast army and he's done in 35 models and that's one of your units you know mm. you have to put that in perspective there's a, a fair amount of time investment and financial investment as a result of that i guess yeah but um it, no one can criticize the model range I don't no. think there's anything you could say about it constructively other than that it's wonderful, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, so next one is uh, the Ogamore tribes, which I think I might have put too, too many Gs in Ogre, but you know. That's <laughs> ah, fine. It's, it's, so... it's even more defensible from an IP perspective. <laughs> We're good. So um, Ogres are rotund brutes, entirely obsessed with eating and fighting. They rampage across the mortal realms on an endless uh, cyclical moor path, devouring everything that they set their piggish eyes upon. Enemies are blasted apart by black powder cannons, gored by long tugged beasts of the frozen waste, and trampled by a sweaty, bellowing mass of flesh. Only the lucky ones are dead before the ogres start to eat them. Wonderful. So, so straight away this sounds a bit more like a blunt instrument right yeah um well their their sort of theme phrases i've got is might makes right um then monstrous infantry melee ravenous brutes the ever winter which is the kind of the more beast claw raider stuff which is the kind of the icy uh tribes uh and they have the gut tribes and they're all about eating everything um fighting and generally just eating sleeping getting up hitting stuff eating it sleep you know just uh, moving across in this big uh more path as they call it um so they, the book's kind of two different books in one yeah which can be mixed so you've got like the the, the generic kind of ogres um and then you've also got the beast claw raiders which is the more monster cavalry big beasts uh very very fast uh very yeah, very one... impactful One's like uh, big, hefty mercenaries visually, and the other one looks more nomadic, fighty. Mm. Here's my, you know, uh, woolly mammoth. 
Yeah, and the Ogle uh, more tribe, sort of the more traditional ogres from back in the day, they have the access to things like your scrap launchers and your, you know, your iron blasters and your uh, lead belcher black powder weapons that you don't have in the uh, really. We do have pistols, yeah. but not really in the. Um, They're really quite quite hard hitting. Some of their um, some of their shooting, particularly the lead belchers, I think are a fairly mm-hmm. well rounded option that people would underestimate often. Yeah, and and they're from the army, they're, they're good at objective control. They've got special rules about counting as more models, which is a little bit better than the core rules. Yeah, uh, they're quite tough. They've got high number of wounds in their units. Um, yep. So strong melee. They've got impactful charges. They're quite tough and they're quite fast. So, um, so really, they're they've kind of score very heavily in like melee, objective control, resilience, and mobility, yeah. depending on how you build your army or skew that even more they're not very good at spells and prayers or shooting though they have yeah. some it's it's not really worth talking about yeah they are pretty incredible at hitting hard i i guess the only thing that stopped us from putting a five on the melee power is the fact that you know you're often on on fours to hit or something obviously mm. you can buff that yeah. by uh by plus one but you'd, you'd say it's um high impact hitting if it gets through often with a fairly decent amount of rend and um they're particularly good against elite armies as a result of that like mm-hmm. you, you don't you don't want one of their big chunky units or chunky monsters going into your five particularly resilient guys because it's probably not going to go very well for you yeah and again it depends what you put in your list but i think like things like your battle line units like Mornfang and um you know your your sort of general augers they're they're not particularly that fighty and one inch reach is a problem for the big units of of yeah. uh, of gluttons because they don't really have the 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 sort of the the reach to really bring their force to bear and yeah. um often not going anywhere though <clears throat> fairly no no fairly tough and i think most of the damage in the army comes from things like stone horns like frost lords on stone horns and husk guards yeah. and you know like the, the, that area so it's it's more character focused than it is unit focused um in terms agree. of the impactful damage um very cool um I've, i like beast claw i've got a beast claw army They're very fun to paint very easy to collect in my opinion the start collecting yeah. is great value um <laughs> so in terms of the models then you've got the the actual augers uh which you know they're actually quite an old kit they've been out yeah, since they are very edition, old. but <laughs> yeah. still really hold up today i don't, oh, I, don't... I, I completely agree i quite like them they're not bad to paint fast either you know you've got some cloth some skin some armor pretty much done they kind of benefit a little bit from being an old kit in the ease of assembly as well because yeah, they're shoulder they're not shoulder head <laughs> very difficult to put together uh the bodies are kind of one piece and they've got like separate shoes two arms a head and a gut plate and that's generally it um the the mourn fang and the the sort of the stone horns and thunder tusks from the beast claw stuff is particularly fun to paint quite easy to get to get together cheap and then you've got they did do a new character which is the plastic tyrant which i think is a particularly nice model excellent yeah um but yeah so they're they're pretty cool yeah, they 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 do a very good job. Either side of this book does a very good job of playing how it reads it should play as well. I think thematically, you know, great big heffalumps running at people and gorging them, um, tick, and then the other people, you know, running there, hitting people hard over the head, and then eating them and healing their wounds back, and you know, being a bit more scary on the charge, but generally quite grindy for the other side of it fits perfectly. And you do have options, you know, a little bit of magic, a little bit of shooting as well. So. I um I think they're a great pick for for new players in general. Yeah, I do. I think they're a really solid army. Um, yeah. And next we have the Auric War Clans, and for anyone who's been around a Games Workshop, you would have heard this shout, no doubt. Oh, we don't need to do that. With a mighty cry and... of war. Too old and boring for that. No wars. <laughs> the War Clans of the Auric shake the mortal realms to their core. In the mortal realms, there are those who fight for justice, those who fight for glory. And those who fight to serve the wills of their all-powerful gods. Oryx, on the other hand, just fight for nothing but brutal fun of it. So they are they are the absolute kind of epitome of fighting because we love it. Um, no rhyme or reason. Um, yeah. So they're, 
they're kind of not not bad they just are what they are which is animals basically yeah they just love smashing stuff so you've got their brutal and cunning um it's because they've also got the cruel boy element which is the new faction that's just been out there for dominion and they've announced mm -hmm. there's a new book coming obviously this is before that book's out so it might change this somehow uh mighty destroyers which is the one of the special rules that iron jaws have which is one of my favorite uh yeah, yeah. favorite sort of like Im imagery of as you hurt them they get closer smashing and bashing which is allows you to kind of cascade fights as you if you kill and you can kill again and if you kill you can kill again so you can multiple activation your iron jaws um the orc word for hitting stuff which is crumping uh which you know got to put that in there uh war obviously is is a very good mechanic you've got big war in this book as well which is the amalgamation of all the oryx uh the bone splitters are more kind of like the shamastic weirdens so they talk yeah. about this the great green and the weird uh, and they're the monster hunters uh they have their talismatic tattoos and their their bony bits and their gubbins and that's sort of what they're kind of the more savagey tribal uh yeah ones, tribal for sure which is uh you know quite a cool aesthetic um and in terms of gameplay for me like it's all about like you've you sort of said it the big bosses because uh the characters really unlock the the kind of get the boys in line you know they bash heads yeah, and get them going in the right and direction they, and things like that so their melee characters are melee as well and yeah. they are I, I i would say none of them are like the tip top of any particular metric but they're all consistently solid you know like hit pretty hard are pretty resilient are pretty fast have a fair amount of wounds mm. um and they're definitely like mainstays throughout the army aren't they yeah and they're, they're kind of like the key to your lists like your your war chanters and your war docs are the ones that whip your boys up into frenzies or do little dances and get them get them all, all riled up your shamans they generally have very very powerful spells but they're not very easy yeah. to cast and they're short range they're not very reliable I mean, like foot of gork is a is a iconic spell from back in the world that was that that's there for the uh the the weird knob shaman from the iron jaws uh and you've got like the the the, the way to like move units with the great green hands you know so they've their magic's really cool but again it's they don't have lots of bonuses and it's quite hard to get casters into your list but bone splitters kind of lean more into the caster element yeah, of they the do army a little bit. um Big so as well which is kind of taking best of both taking all bits of it and <laughs> shoving it all together and was very good in the last book yeah book. um and you build up this war points that 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 whip your army up with bonuses and then you could spend them to get bonuses to cast and things like that so like yeah it's it's quite a cool way because you can lean into one i mean we haven't seen the cruel boy book yet so but they're obviously from the rules we have seen they've got some shooting the they've got poison oh, yeah they seem that way and and you've got the kind of grots the hob grots which are not, not grots but they're kind of grots and then you know they're kind of like your your chaffy screens and then the the kind of the um the cruel boys themselves they've got their leering shields and they've got poison there from the swamps so they've got their own aesthetic they're kind of probably i'd say more cunning than brutal and iron jaws are yeah. probably more brutal than cunning kind of if you want to think of it like that and then bone splitters are just really soft but there's quite a lot of them <laughs> yeah so it's weird they are protected the... by tattoos only <laughs> yeah well they they, they they just love it so but it is a ward save so you know it's yeah. good so they are it's a melee focus there is some shooting i mean crawl boys we don't know but they've got some you've seen the bolt thrower and the bolt it's boys so they've got shooting, some yeah well the, the, the ones in the core box are great you know um yeah. then you've got some fast units you've got like gore grunters and boar boys and more crushers and ways to move out of sequence with with like things yeah. like iron suns as a sub faction and things like that um tough but generally low bravery um yeah and I, yeah. I i find they've got a lot of rend or mortal wounds or ways to the iron jaws or the iron jaws, yeah. spread throughout yeah, yeah. i i think so like I, I like i said not not at the top of anything but above average on quite a lot of it you also got a decent amount of stuff that has you know like an okay reach in these books which um yeah is always like, like brutes have an option to have two out of every five guys with a two inch reach weapon that has a bit more end i think or something like that they can all have a two inch reach weapon if you give them the uh 
the the right weapon they, so you can okay. run in a 10 you know a 10 there's no problems with yeah. coherency so yeah i mean like i think for me like it's a very i would say it's there are cavalry but it's more of an infantry or medium cavalry based army it's Agreed, not like you yeah. don't have like super heavy character cavalry the the more no. crusher is particularly fearsome as a monster the dragon that looks like a cabbage <laughs> it's the affectionately grumpy. known as the cabbage, the grumpy cabbage. um <laughs> and obviously you've gordrak lives in this faction and um you know kragnos can still join any of them so he's still an option but yeah you've got i think if you we take our sort of radar diagram we've kind of got mostly in the middle um yeah because where, where you might play iron jaws might have more resilience and and stuff like that then they've got less spell or less shoot they've got like basically zero shooting yeah. whereas like bone splitters have more shooting and more magic but then less resilience but then yeah. there's more of them so it's kind of they kind of sit nicely in the middle but i think mobility and melee power is generally where they shine yeah they, they can a, a lot uh not throughout all of them but there's various ways to get impact hit light mechanics as well and in here and stuff like that and they they do they can get to places fairly reliably and hit pretty fast and hard, especially, you know, on that first turn when they crash in. So, um, sure. They're quite, it's quite scary to face a wall of them always, isn't it? Even, mm. even if you think they're, you're running a better book or you have a good army matchup, you know, there's always some real potential there for that to just wreck your day a bit on the charge if they get slightly over average. Yeah. I think they're a really cool army. So model wise, I mean, uh, it's a diverse Welcome range because <laughs> Just... <laughs> you've got the armored iron jaws which i love and i i whenever as soon as i saw them i love them but when it comes to actually assembly and painting they're actually a lot harder than they look yes they um, are a bit yeah they're more techy than they look for sure i'd agree with because that. of the layers it's quite hard to paint them Just if you glue them together and go to paint them they're going to be a bit challenging yeah and look at the gore grunters there's like seven different surfaces on those yeah and um that is is, is is yeah it's good i mean the mega boss on foot is one of my favorite models um yeah I love him the savage orcs are mostly skin yeah so i've painted a lot of these uh at horrible uh like for horrible time deadlines and they are pretty good it's basically flesh a weapon or you know made literally made of stone or bone so they're they're quite good to get done fairly fast and also i think because they're a horde army people don't properly look at the models and games workshops paint job on them tends to pick out things in a very blocky fashion yeah. the models are really good like the guys on they the floors look amazing um and i i think their aesthetic is it's a it's really narrow and perfect and i've got a lot of love for it and they're not bad to paint either and if you want to do a really nice job on the bosses and stuff and get you know up to level 11 with the skin and the teeth and the the bits and bobs you absolutely can you can also paint them any way you want because their skin could be whatever color you like and their weapons could be made of whatever you want and you could cover them in blood or not or you know i've uh yeah i've got quite a lot of love for them i had wise, a um mixed destruction army but before that went away like idea where i was going to use these guys because they were battle line and i was they were yeah. going to be like ice orcs and they were all going to have like dark blue skin and, and yeah. ice weapons because they've got flint but if you painted it like ice and then yeah. i had like uh beast core raiders in it so it was a uh, ice themed uh army but it never materialized <laughs> <laughs> um and then obviously we got the cruel boy models that that this one's not out yet was we record this but it was revealed and they are like very monk. detailed, very, um, very, very kind of. They've got they're a more quite grim, real, dark, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, I quite like them a lot. I actually. do. I, I do too. I just like how different they are, and, and you know, this guy's tassels aren't made of my grand's curtain thing. Yeah. So <laughs> I am down. Change yeah. the tassels. It does. Um, it is, but I would say, as a new player, those models probably quite intimidating to build and paint. Um, yeah. I think so. Use of spray cans and some contrast paints and a bit of dry brushing will get you a, a long way if you do some research. Um, just Street, to get you around streaking the grime if factor. you're confident with yeah. going outside of uh, acrylics. Um, so I'd say, yeah. I mean, I'm looking forward to like getting a small force together for myself. But uh, yeah, it's they are they're great. I mean, I love the Auric Warclans is for me is is the, the destruction faction i like the most um i think destruction's probably got one of the best selections of models given its size of 
if anything. Mm. <laughs> like, we've not had much to criticize the models for. Have no, we? I mean, all the models. I mean, generally across the board, across every army, they're all good. I mean, Games Watch know what they're doing when it comes to models. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, Absolutely. So, I guess, uh, on to the, the biggest of the big, then. What's what's bigger and scarier than a really angry cabbage with Gordrak on top? Well, the Sons of Bayamat. So, the Titanic Sons of Bayamat have been an, enough, have might enough to throttle dragons, barge down castle walls, tear elder oaks from the ground. When they attack as a tribe, they become unstoppable, stamping the enemy's infantry flat and pummeling rival monsters to death. Any who oppose their rule are battled with, battered with hurled boulders before the gargants charge in, each towering hulk roaring in savage triumph as he seizes victory through brute force and ignorance. It's like destruction's post about it, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? And what I like quite about this is they've got a rule which is similar. It's like the to do with objective capture. So ogres have might makes right. They have mightier makes rightier. <laughs> 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 because they're like that turned up to 11 so they, they take counters like 10 models but if you're in the taker tribe they're 20 for objectives which is huge um they can throw rocks they can stuff people into their bags or down their trousers they have the breaker taker stomper tribes uh brawling and bellowing is the kind of thing um but essentially you've got a very low model count you might only have four models in your army um, and they are huge giants. Uh, and you might you have some little man crusher gargants, which are the little giants. But I think most armies are probably max is 10 models, and most are around yeah. f six Seven, to eight. eight and like max, you're, yeah. you're not going to have many more than that. And the minimum you can do is four mega gargants, which I'm quite excited about as, a, as an army. Yeah. They are monstrous, obviously, because they're giants, they're elite. Uh, in this fact is you don't have very many uh so they've obviously melee focused or they do throw rocks they have quite high damage but low number and low quality attacks so you you're rolling not a lot of dice but if they go through they do a lot of damage um yeah so their melee power is quite good um but actually where they shine is objective capture oh so much like we've not given out many if any fives mm. uh at all whilst doing this but hands down they are um they are shockingly good at this um, and essentially they are when they've got one wound left out of their 35 they still count as if they've got all their wounds so they don't degrade whereas a unit of 30 guys when you've killed 28 there's only two left so they count as two rather than the giant doesn't lose any of its capture ability so that's why they're so good it's a bit swingy though because if you lose a giant it's 25 percent your army so it's it's a big deal um uh, but bit they are a, resilient yeah bit of a shout out to their um uh what are the strategies called that you pick at the start of the game grand strategies your grand strategies um they're pretty good at that <laughs> yeah well you just pick <laughs> keep a monster alive so you just got to have a yeah. model alive in your army and you get that um this is why Ares three have made them shine really because you've they're all yeah. heroes they're all monsters they get monsters rampage you get heroic battle actions they're, they're well. both battle line and leaders and behemoth so you've got the best of everything they just were so good in scenario play um Absolutely little to no magic essentially they've got no magic but you can get it in by using artifacts like the wizard's tome well, or yeah you know things like that so they're they they don't really do that sort of stuff um they do shoot but they chuck rocks it's kind of like a compliment it's not a shooting army per se no mobility they're in the middle um they're not slow but the problem is is that they're consistent aren't they they don't fly and although they can sort of long shanks over people they they don't they, they're actually quite difficult to be mobile because you don't have many of them and once they're in combat they're kind of fighting and if you run out of combat you're not fighting so it's uh yeah but they are resilient just because you've got so many wounds. wounds so so yeah just to to cover this, so a, a, a lot of people building armies in Age of Sigmar, you know, you'd be like, now I'm I'm really good at killing, you know, 20, 25 wounds worth of my opponent's units in one turn, which means I can pick one unit, kill it, pick another unit the next turn, kill it. They have so many wounds, they just break that in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. You know, 
lots of armies out there that are really good at wiping out a unit cannot wipe out 35 wounds worth of, you know, four up armor save, um, six, five up after save, whatever you've given them. And um, that counts for a lot. And as Russ has already said numerous times, when they've got one wound left, they can still do quite a lot, especially as far as objectives are concerned. And one of the things to consider, like their base is like quite big, it's like this. But if you tried to fit 35 small bases in that space, you wouldn't be able to do it. So yeah. actually for the base footprint to bring models to bear to hit them is hard because you're not spread out in a wide area. Whereas if you've got like a big blobby unit, they can put 40, 50 guys again around that easily. Whereas yeah. especially with the new changes to reach um, and, and, and coherency, because you can't get that many to bear because you can't, you, you've got to be, you can't do a big wraparound line of elite stuff. Okay. You've got to be two ranks. It's actually quite hard to hit them with everything. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I do think that it benefits them as well. So yeah, particularly if they've got a lot of little snipes, which can kill a character that breaks coherency. So, cause they could stick them down their trousers and, you know, so <laughs> of course. They, they are, they, they, they are quite a simplistic, but they also a technical army because yeah, you, you can't agree. make mistakes. You've um, got to make every one of those dudes count because you only got four and that's it. <laughs> and in terms of models, and this is probably the only faction I've been able to fit every single model in the range on one sheet with four pictures. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you've got the Mega Gargant kit. So you've got the, you've basically got the Stomper, which is, is the, t the top left, the Taker, which is top right, the Gatebreaker, which is the, the, the bottom right, and the Man Crusher Gargant, which is the bottom left. So they are really nice. Um, they are a little bit on the expensive side if you're going for the Megas, because I think they're 120 pounds retail. So having multiple is, is a problem. I'm just going to grab one because I think it's helpful to show how big they are. Okay, that's fine. So um, they're also a kit that in terms of assembly and modeling as a newer player would be quite intimidating. Uh, lots of mold lines where they join um you can see that <laughs> it looks very big <laughs> so um yeah so you've got lots of like mold lines and assembly is a little bit challenging on them uh but yeah. as you can see from byron's uh very That's nicely huge. painted gargan it's a pretty big kit so yeah they are they are absolutely massive and this is the type of base size we're talking about yeah and uh you know if you can bring one point of that base to bear on any enemy unit, you're going to put 100% of your attacks in, in that one centimeter location, mm -hmm. which you can't say for a lot of other units. They are unique in numerous ways in the world of Age of Sigma. Um, very, very cool army, and they've definitely become, you know, a, a proper powerhouse in AOS 3 as well. Their, their stock has risen as high as anyone's has, I think. And they're a lot of fun. Uh, and Loads. Kragnos yeah. can still join them for... Oh, that's an army, isn't it? That's just destruction embodied. Kragnos and three... Is it Kragnos and three dudes? I, I, I don't know if you can. Probably not. It's well, probably Kragnos, Kragnos and two. And, and, a, and a little <laughs> one. Because I think he's like 700 points. And yeah, he I is. Think they're, they're, they're all 490, 480 minimum. Um, but one of the things that is worth mentioning about the Gargans, these mega Gargans, the big ones, they can go in any army as a mercenary. Um, each so, of one of each of them can go in each of like each, ones for death ones for yeah. order ones for chaos and destruction can have any of them so if you wanted oh. to put a gatebreaker in your iron jaws army that's fine yeah gatebreakers so bottom right that's the death giant as you can probably tell by the black and the sort of the gate portcullis and things like that the order giant is the nautical type themed netty netty one which is the taker which is top yeah. top right uh, top left is the War Stomper, which is the Chaos Giant. Um, yeah. So they've they've all got their their stuck. So if you're particularly in love with these models and you're okay with big kits, they are plastic. So it's no, you know, they're still modern and fairly yeah. rewarding. Um, they are quite a good army. If you're not put off, if you're an experienced modeler, I think they're a really good army to start yeah. because you can get it done fairly quickly. Absolutely. Um, if you know what you're doing or you follow a good tutorial, you can have, you know, in 30 hours of painting, you could have 2,000 points painted to a really good level as well. Yeah. And you, could, you know, you could do it faster at a lower level, which you can't really say for many armies out there. No. Um, 
So I guess we should get on to the face hammer scoring for new armies then, and there might yeah. be a few head scratches at these ratings. Yeah, I think it's going to be a surprise. Let's let's <laughs> should we start with a surprise? So well, I mean, we can run through the top to bottom. So gloom spite is only a two out of five for beginners. Yeah. Um, and when we do these ratings, we look at gameplay, but also hobby like assembly. The, Finances, the, the rules, money. You know, the cost, yeah, all these sort of things. So, Gloom Spite are a little bit in a weak point right now. Um, you need a lot of models, which means it's going to take you a while to get there. They're quite techy to play well. Um, mm. Also, you've got a little bit of a disjointed book because you've got some rules that are in Bellacor and not in the the actual Batome itself. I'm just going to check which one it's actually in. Yeah, no worries. I don't want I'll carry on to talk. tell you it's Bellacor and it's not. It's all good. <laughs> I'll carry on. I'll carry on talking about them. So, you know, as ever, we're not saying don't take these, but I think you have to act, it, particularly if you want to get advice on what is a good version of this army to start with, going to someone to ask for their suggestion is a really good point. So I would be considering dropping in, you know, a large unit of Trogoths, a couple of wizards, uh a an arachnoc spider maybe one large horde of goblins and then a couple of other interesting units and starting out like that so you know you've got four five six war scrolls max and you don't have to have a million models and you don't have to spend a million pounds and that is a really good way to start you know try and have a little bit of shooting a little bit of magic um you know not more than 80 models whatever it is and that's a really good way to make sure that you have a nice experience uh, beginning and that you learn as much as possible as fast as possible but if you start out with you know multiple hordes of goblins four different wizards that are all fragile and a load of spells that you have to manage nicely i think it, it could potentially be a little bit overwhelming for people the models are gorgeous across the board all of them um so we don't want to switch people off from taking them but i think you just you know it helps to be mindful of this stuff rather than having your first game and not having a clue what's going on so you need Kragnos and this. So the, the oh, sorry, it's mirrored in my webcam, but you, you can tell what it is. Um, <laughs> Kragnos is also a good option for Gloom Spite if you want to get is it quicker. Yeah. So he actually Absolutely. is actually quite a good gaming aspect as well because he brings something mm -hmm. they don't have. So yeah, um, he hits saying, hard and he want, wants to be surrounded by cheap dudes. So absolutely, it's just that be aware that this is a slightly tougher journey than if you start with the next one, which would be. The Og or more tribes, again, with the misspelling, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of heat for that in the comments. Um, oh, dude, it's fine. <laughs> so, I sent an entire tutorial live with the wrong unit's name on yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got these at four and a half ha face hammers, uh, and that's... Out of size for right? Purely because, like, models we touched on are fairly easy to build and paint due to the age mm -hmm. of the kits, which is a weird thing to say. They're in that sweet Incredible spot. Incredible start collecting. Yes. Really good start Good value collecting. for like money. The best, maybe, yeah. Um, fun to play fairly mm -hmm. simple but still yeah. can be quite competitive so i think they're a, a really have a bit of spot. all aspects of the game as well not yeah. loads but you can have a bit of shooting can have a bit of magic can have a bit of spells mm. so sorry priests things prayers they have they have magic too if you take uh butchers yep. so uh but yep. it's um yeah why is it not five then um i think just because like they're not um then they're, they're not as easy to play as you might think by yeah. looking at them um even the beast claw raider army there's a lot of techy little rules interactions that you might need to to get the most out of them also yeah. um some of the older models are like resin like fine cast models that you need yeah. like the if you want to use like a fire belly or a slaughter sort of priest things like that so yeah. i mean it's, it's it's marginal really um Minor. and also like because they're quite large models for skin some people find skin particularly difficult to paint um that's all it is really um yeah i, I think yeah, a base they're, coat and they're a an outstanding first army absolutely outstanding like one of my first go-to points if people asked me and they were into the idea of playing like destruction would be uh specifically a beast call list but the, uh, the alcohol is a great too yeah and then we've got the auric war clans which you know four out of five um solid i think like 
that everything we've said about them in terms of you've got a very wide selection of models uh what's quite nice is you can do an iron jaws army or you could do a bone spitters army then you've basically got a big war army as well um yeah. The start collecting the sort of the, the Dominion box has crawl boys in it, which is an Auric War Clan unit, as it's yep. been confirmed. So the only reason it's not five is I think the Iron Jaws are actually harder to paint than they look. They are, yeah, and for sure. Anyone starting an Iron Jaws army, you're going to glue them together, then you're going to re- go to paint them and wish you hadn't glued them together. <laughs> yeah. um, and doing anything in the, the armor that is not yeah flat on bodies is mm-hmm. is the big thing we're talking about here, guys. So when you've got like you're trying to paint someone's face and it's got, you know, great big horns here and here or like and stuff it's like, like that. And you, you can know, see got like down into someone's plate, chest. But you yeah. can see this bit, but you can't get the brush in without getting paint on this, which is the armor. And you can leave all that off and there's not a lot of models to paint, but it's difficult. And then like the, I think like the Savage Oryx stuff is easier to paint, but you need yeah. more of it. And uh, gaming wise, it's harder to use them. It's, yeah, they are. You've got to play them really well. Um, I think the Savage Oryx, they're fairly unforgiving. They do have perfect companions in the Iron Jaws to get in some resilience there and some slightly more well rounded War Scrolls for sure. But uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty techy, having played them a fair bit myself to, to do well with without doing something stupid. And then the Cruel Boys are looking, as a modeling point of view, a little bit more advanced than both of those those sides and gameplay wise time will tell but agreed yeah, yeah. Um, nice to have some ranged options in there though never never a bad thing so should end mm-hmm. up being quite a well-rounded book i'm interested to see if big war continues i imagine it will um but uh yeah how exactly how that'll work or how exactly they'll interact with each other or if you can just put everything in and you know we will see yeah uh, we will review that battle tone when it's released so just keep an eye on the channel if you're interested in that mm-hmm. um Sons of Bayamat are three and a half. Um, and although we talked about how easy it is to get them on the table, the price point is very high. Um, if you're if you're in the UK and you're looking at four mega gargons, you it's almost five hundred pounds. Um, it's you know, it's a lot to do. Um, I also hey, think Kragnos sounds like a good idea again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. uh, also, it's the the other issue with the army is it doesn't really teach you how to play Age of Sigma because it's unlike any other army in the game. Yeah, it's very unique. So if you play Sons of Bearmat as your first army and then you go, oh, I fancy doing a different one, you can have a harder time purely because it doesn't work like any other army so it's yeah. it's it's kind of like it's not a waste of time but it's just not time that you're you're investing in learning like multiple phases of the game in, in a standard yeah. way um they're yeah. also to be well with them i think you need to be a fairly decent player because yeah. if you make a mistake with one model put it in the if wrong one place, guy gets stranded too far away even just too far away not even dead but not close enough to where you want him to be and then you don't get the turn roll, you could have just lost the game because yeah. it's a quarter of your army. Or you you deploy them too close and they get shot. Yeah, turn or someone, one, someone resilient needed. ties up to it once or something. Yeah, or they, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, you, 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 there's lots of ways to misplay them um, when okay. you haven't got many. Uh, whereas it's if you've super got a, fun, though, and they, they, yeah. they play like they should, and they are re- we cannot under, like, there, there's no way to overstate, sorry. How good they are at objective play played well like they are mm. a force to be reckoned with in that sense yeah and and like to be honest the kits themselves like i said touched on earlier are advanced to to, to like if you're a beginner then it's not that easy but i think if you what one of the positives about the gaming with them is that it allows you to have not a lot to think about and kind of watch what your opponent's stuff does to learn other factions so yeah, it's quite yeah. good for that yeah because Make you your decisions right for your yeah. whole army as well the bits Which, that you do have if you were like well i want to get into the game quickly and have a lot of time especially if you go into events and you go i want to have a lot of time yeah. between rounds to go around and meet people look at other armies that right. they're an army that you can play a game very quickly same with beast claw raiders but yes and you you're then got time to go around the event check out other armies talk to people you know, whereas gloom spike git you're going to be needing the whole the whole round time 
to and move and, and, and play <laughs> and cast and do and and so like it's it, particularly how if you've not gone for like a chogger farm and you've gone for like a more sort of moon clan grot focused army you're gonna have a lot to do so um it swings and roundabouts it's personal preference yeah. but you know you can start with any army we're not saying that don't don't if you love Karim spite don't do them but it's just be aware of, of of what it's like to collect them and what they do um which is what the purpose of this video is really so absolutely i'll um i'll tell you what i'll do i will write up a list that we can put in the description of this for gloom spite that i think is a you know a, a solid starting level where you don't have too many dudes and it does a little bit of everything and it's got a resilient unit and a drug unit i'll uh, i'll bash up one of those and that will be in the description of this video yeah and we've, we're probably going to do a follow-up to this series where we do some like beginner lists which will be Absolutely, yeah. we've done a during the lead up to christmas we did some start collecting videos where we we highlighted armies from start collecting sets obviously that was aos 2 so um we'd like to revisit that for aos 3 around these armies so i think we can probably do a series of like five army lists with the boxes you need and yeah, maybe absolutely. get the bundles kind of like put up on yeah, element or something like that and and so watch this space um yeah so hopefully that's useful and that's told you everything you need to know about description uh so about destruction uh let us know um below in the comments if you if you disagree or or, or yeah or have any questions if you want advice on a particular faction if you if you are really dead set on something and you want to know what we think would be the best starting version of that do let us know and us or and our viewers will help out as well because it's been really helpful in the comments yeah join the discord as well if you if you're a new player and you want some advice yeah, and want to point. know what's going on we've got we've got channels for every grand alliance hobby channels and rules channels and uh yeah come and be part of our community uh, links links in the video description below um but thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you all again soon thanks guys bye see you